Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a side-by-side -side comparison of a high-end chalk paint versus a very inexpensive one. I'm gonna be using the OG, the original Annie Sloan chalk paint, and I'm gonna see how it compares to Waverly Chalk, a bargain brand that you can find at Walmart or on Amazon. So if you wanna hear all my thoughts and see my comparison, just keep watching. If you are new here, I am a furniture painter and refinisher, and you will find me here on YouTube making over old pieces that I have around my house or things that I find on the cheap. So if you wanna learn more about furniture painting, I would love it if you subscribe before you leave here today. I am so excited for today's video. I have had this idea on my mind for a long time, and I'm actually really excited to be filming it today. I found the perfect table yesterday. I got this thing for $15 at my local thrift store, and it's you know big enough to show you guys the comparison, but I'm not wasting my money on a piece that I'm painting in half one paint and half the other. <laughs> so this is gonna be really chatty. I'm gonna be talking to you about the paint, how it's going on, the different finishes that they have. I even got Waverly brushes. I'll be talking to you about prices and where you can get everything. So let's zoom you in and we'll get started. Back when I started painting, Annie Sloan chalk paint is the paint that I I started with, it was one of the only ones on the market. She's the OG, the original. It's a really great paint. I still love it today. I have a lot of videos using this paint, so I'll link my playlist up above. And I have the Annie Sloan oval brush that I'm painting on. Um, if you, like I said, if you wanna see me paint more with this paint, I have done this on whole pieces, so I know how this is gonna perform. I love this paint. This is the first paint that I ever started painting with. Um, it's available at uh, local stores. It's uh, sometimes they sell online, but only individual stores are allowed to sell it. You can't get it on Amazon or like in a hardware store or anything like that. You have to go to a stockist, which you can find on their website. It is expensive. It is a high-end paint. It costs around $40 a container. And this brush that I'm using uh, retails for around $36. I don't use it like too often because I know it's hard for you guys to get um, a hold of, but I actually chatted with Annie Sloan herself through DM on Instagram recently. And I was just able to express to her how much her paint has meant to me, how it changed my life, how it introduced me to furniture painting. I didn't even know that was a thing. And now I have a channel and I get to hang out with you guys um, and I have a business and I have a job. So um, I'm very grateful to Annie. And I just think this is a wonderful, wonderful paint and it's definitely worth every penny. And in case you're new here and you don't know what chalk paint is, um, the paint doesn't actually have chalk in it. It just refers to the matte finish that the paint leaves. Um, it can be painted on like this and to kind of create texture. It can also be applied smooth if you thin it out with a little bit of water and use a different brush. Um, it distresses really easily, which I will show you that technique. You can distress it to make it look older. And as you can see, it adheres directly to a finished surface. You don't have to sand or prime. You just clean it off and you can get to painting. I'm gonna do my best to like keep them separated. So I thought their plaster color would be the closest match to old white. So that's what I'm gonna use. I have always been scared to try this paint. Um, I just didn't think there was any way for the price that it is that it would match up to. Annie Sloan chalk paint, but my girl Katja, who is also a furniture painter here on YouTube, recommends this. She's used it before. And we are good friends and talk all the time about furniture painting. And I said, is this on the real? Like you use this inexpensive paint and you love it? And she told me yes. So I have watched some of her videos and I'm gonna kind of use her technique for um, using this paint. And I will link one of those up above. So I'm just kind of gonna shake it and get a little bit out on this plate. It's very thick, so I'm gonna water this down a little bit. Just kind of stir that up. You could do this in a bowl too. Um, I'm just not doing it a lot, so I thought it would be easier to just do this paper plate. So I'm just gonna mix this water in until it kind of has the same consistency as the Annie Sloan. All right, okay, that's looking pretty good. 
So now I'm gonna take my brush um, and I'm gonna use the Waverly brush. The price comparison, this Waverly brush is $10 versus the Annie Sloan that's around 35, 36. And then this paint for eight ounces is around $7 and 16 ounces is around 11. So definitely a lot cheaper. So I'm just gonna spray my brush like I normally do. Get my brush nice and wet and I'm gonna dip in. Oh my gosh. Ah, I'm so excited. Okay, let's see how this goes on. Um, okay. Okay. This is pretty nice. Um, it looks like the coverage is thicker um, than Annie Sloan. So I'm gonna try to keep this line um, pretty close to right down the middle. I think we'll be able to tell. I like the way this is going on though. Okay, now, now I smell it a little bit more now that I'm putting on. It does kind of have a little bit of a paint smell to it, but it's not super strong. This brush is a little stiffer, so I'm finding it a little bit hard to get up in these corners and stuff. I like the coverage, it seems to be going on well. Yeah, this brush is okay. I definitely like the Annie Sloan brush better, um, but it's getting the job done. It's definitely a little scratchier, so you can see it leaves like more brush strokes. And I got these at Walmart. They have a lot more colors on walmart.com and it is available on Amazon, but it's way more expensive on Amazon. It was like five to $10 more expensive. So you could just buy it on Walmart or you could go in store and see what they have. So I put plastic wrap over my paint to help it not dry out as well as wrap my paint brushes in damp paper towels. So I'm gonna eat lunch and then we'll come back and do second coat. Okay, so it's been about an hour and my paint is dry and they both feel pretty good. I've not seen a huge difference side by side, but the way really did have better coverage than Annie Sloan, but that's not that big of a deal to me because we'll see how it's gonna look after the second coat. hard to get white to focus up close, but they look really similar. I wanna test out how this Waverly chalk distresses. So I just have a really fine sandpaper. This is 220, just, it's just a little disc. You can use just regular sandpaper. And I'm just gonna kind of rough up the edge a little bit to see how it looks. So the Waverly actually distressed really nice. Very similar to Annie Sloan. In fact, I can't really tell a difference between the two. So I like the way it distresses. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply my Annie Sloan wax to my Annie Sloan side. This is what it looks like. This is the Annie Sloan brush that I'm gonna be applying it with today. They actually don't sell this one anymore. The one they have now is more pointed and this one's round, but this is still a nice brush. Just get a little bit of wax on there. This wax is really um, soft, but it's definitely in a solid form and it is pretty stinky. It has a pretty strong odor. It smells like mineral spirits. I'm gonna go look, grab my lint-free cloth and I'm just gonna wipe off that excess. Get rid of any of those globs that I see. Okay, next up I am ready to wax the Waverly piece. They have their clear wax and then they have a matte varnish. So I'm gonna do half of it in the wax and half in the varnish. This wax is a really different because it is actually really liquidy. I'm gonna pour this on a plate because I'm not really sure how it's gonna work. But yeah, this is way different than anything I've used before. So this is the Waverly brush that I bought, so I'm gonna apply the wax with that. They also said you could use a lint-free cloth, so I might do a little bit of that. This is really interesting. I'm just gonna dip this in here. I'm gonna kinda get the excess off, I think, and then go for it here. Kind of 
Okay, so it said to do it in circular motion. So that's what I'm doing. It's really easy to see where I'm putting it. So that's nice. It is deepening the color a little bit, but as it dries, I don't know if that will change. This brush is working well to apply it. So I'm just doing circles and then I'm gonna do this back and forth a little bit. My lint-free cloth, like I usually do. I'm just kinda wipe it a little bit just to get the excess off. I like that. Huh. It doesn't look too streaky, but um, white is really forgiving. So I'd kind of like to try it out with a different color to see how this looks. Wow, very cool. Not too hard. Okay, now I'm gonna try to just do it with just a cloth and see how that goes. I'm just gonna take a clear section that doesn't have any wax on it yet. Just dip this in here a little bit and I'm just kind of spreading it around on the plate so I make sure that I don't have too much. And I'm gonna go. Right in there. That's working pretty well as well. I don't know, I think I might like the brush better, but this is definitely working. Wow, I really like that, that's cool. I haven't ever seen like a really liquidy wax like this before, but I, I like the way it feels. It seems like it's sealed it. It's giving it that matte finish. It looks even. It looks very similar to the Annie Sloan that I did. I don't know about durability and stuff, but the look of it is really nice. Um, the odor doesn't really have one. Um, when I opened it, I kind of smelled it, but um, it definitely has less of an odor than the Annie Sloan wax. Okay, so I saved this last corner so that we can do the matte varnish, which is a water-based formula. Um, that's perfect for sealing heavily used indoor and outdoor painted projects. It says to mix the varnish by rolling the bottle on a tabletop. Do not shake. This says use a soft bristle brush, but I'm actually gonna use a foam brush because I like applying those with top coat. I just find that they work better. So I'm gonna try that first. If it looks horrible, I will go find a soft bristle brush. And I'm gonna go kind of with my brush strokes here. Get this on. It's a lot thicker than other clear water-based top coats that I've worked with. Seems to be going on pretty nicely. Doesn't have a very strong odor right now, which I've heard, I've heard that this stuff can be really stinky, so I don't know if it's just because my room is so big. The nice thing about it being thick is that it's not dripping, so I'm just trying to spread it out smooth. This foam brush is working really well, so I think that it would be safe to use one of these. It's not shedding or anything. And I just get less brush strokes with top coats when I use these, um, but you definitely could use a brush if you wanted to. It's just personal preference because I've worked with top coats on chalk paint before. I just like this technique the best. The last thing I wanna do is do a comparison of Annie Sloan Dark Wax to the Waverly Dark Wax. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of detailing on this table here to see how that looks. Do a little bit of clear wax, just a little bit of dark wax. And I like to mix those together, um, especially when I'm working with white just so that it's not too overwhelming. So I'm gonna mix this up a little bit. I'm just gonna get a little bit of wax in my wax brush and I really work it in, get the excess off. And then this is my Annie Sloan side. So I'm just gonna go right in here where I distressed and deepen it up a little bit. Then I'm gonna take my cloth Wipe that back. I sometimes use um, steel wool to rub this in, but I don't have any today. So I'm just using this. You can see how that darkened up that edge a little bit. And I'm just gonna rub it in 
this little area right here. Maybe on the edge a little bit. Okay, so there's the Annie Sloan side. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same process and take just a little bit of this dark wax. You don't need as much, that's why I bought this little teeny tiny one. I'm gonna take a little bit of the clear Waverly and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of the brown. I'm sure you can use this full strength. I just would rather take it easy than overdo it. So I'm gonna mix these two together. So I'm gonna use this little Waverly brush. It came in a set uh, with that other chalk brush. So I'm just gonna get a little bit on this brush and kind of spread it out a little bit. I'm gonna go in that same place where I distressed and kind of put this on here. And wipe it. I don't, know, I don't know how I think about feel about this. <laughs> I feel like since this is so liquidy, it's absorbing more into the wood and it's just kind of changing the color of the paint versus like adding detail like the Annie Sloan one does. Even though I mixed it, it seems like it's really hard to control. Yeah, so it's just making it really brown. I definitely like the Annie Sloan um, dark wax butter. It's just like super natural. The Waverly one just looks muddy to me. Here is the side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, Waverly chalk is on the right and Annie Sloan is on the left. And I really cannot tell <laughs> a big difference between them. The only thing I will say about Waverly is I did not like the dark wax. I think it just looks muddy. I think the Annie Sloan side definitely looks more natural. Okay, so this is the Waverly side and the right side is the varnish and the left side is the wax and I cannot tell a difference between them. Um, the, the, the brush strokes really disappeared on the varnish and um, it feels nice and smooth. So I liked working with them both. The coverage on the Waverly side is actually better than the Annie Sloan coverage. My final thoughts on this paint comparison, I still love Annie Sloan, it still performs great. Love the brushes, love the wax, love everything about it, know that it holds up. But I was really shocked at the performance of this Waverly chalk. It really surprised me how well it performed. The brushes, I don't like as much as my Annie Sloan brushes, but they definitely work. So if you're somebody just starting out and you don't wanna invest a lot of money, I think it's definitely worth a shot to try this out. The only thing that um, I can't really test right now is how well it's going to hold up over time. So I'm going to leave this piece just like this, put it out somewhere in my house where we can actually use it. And then I'm going to probably come back in a couple of months and let you know how it's holding up. I know Annie Sloan holds up really well because I have it all over my house. This hutch is an example. I've moved it and it's been painted for five years and it still looks like it's in great shape. I'd also like to try out more of these colors and see how the top coats perform over maybe a darker color. If you would like to see me paint a whole piece in this Waverly chalk, or if you wanna see more paint comparisons, let me know down in the comment box. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up before you leave. Don't forget to subscribe if you wanna see more videos from me. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching this all the way to the end. I'll be back with another project soon and I will see you guys next time.